Life Fight with Jermaine Andre is a positive production of Rare Gem Productions. For previous episodes or to get new episode updates, subscribe to the Life Fight channel hosted on the inspiration network of OneRareGem.com. That's O-N-E-R-A-R-E-G-E-M.com. For the tools you need to take on your life fight. With world UFC two-time world champion, five-time U.S. champion, Jermaine Andre. Visit JermaineAndre.com. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Jermaine Andre here with Jermaine Andre's Life Fight. I got Rebecca Beck with me. Hi, everybody. And today I'm going to cover a very, very good topic um, called Beyond CCW. And Beyond CCW is a course that I created. You know, we know that everybody's, you know, getting guns. They're carrying guns, which uh, I totally agree with. For American citizens, they should be able to defend themselves. And anybody with half a brain knows nowadays that criminals are not screwing around. They carry guns. They use guns to attack. So if you're going to have a a fair defense, you probably need a gun, too. But there is something you need with that gun, and that's proper training. You need to be at a certain mental state. You need to be aware. You need to know how to fight with your hands and your feet and other things. So I'm going to be covering that about this course that I created called Beyond CCW that's really hot. And, you know, a lot of these uh, very conscious gun carriers are coming from all over to take this course and they're learning a lot and they're getting more comfortable with carrying their firearms. And they're also, you know, getting safer in regards to, you know, people carrying guns around. You know, when I'm sitting in McDonald's with my kid, which I don't sit at McDonald's with my kid, I'm just use that as an example. But if I'm sitting at McDonald's with oh, my daughter, why don't you, use an example? you know, that's right. OK, I won't use that as an example. <laughs> if I'm sitting at the vegan restaurant with my daughter, you know, and I want to think about all of these people in here who have a gun on them. You know, and if somebody comes in and does something stupid and you got everybody cowboying up and yahooing and pulling their guns out and shooting. And I'm saying, OK, well, all this guy did, all this girl did was shoot a target 20 times, you know, so that can make you a little say. Eh. So I've created something to help people be more comfortable with the use and the carrying of their firearm. But before we get into that, I want to talk about this drug that's out that people are using and what they're actually doing is they're putting the drug on business cards, uh, flyers, things like that. Yeah, now it's a drug. Now, this is the thing. You always remember when I report stuff like this, we know how the Internet is. We know how everything is. And you never know if, you know, if something's real, if something's not real. So, you know, stories that get out there. Uh, so I try to do as much research as I can and just let you know of stuff that makes sense. Now, we all know, you know, that there's always been drugs that you can put on a rag and put on somebody's face and, you know, and it'll pass them out. So. Can you real quick let your um, live viewers know that that's my pink phone and not your pink phone? Oh, yes. Live viewers <laughs> who's ever watching, this is not my pink phone, okay? I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying? Real men don't wear pink. I do support, you know, uh, breast cancer awareness, but I'll wear a T-shirt for it. Now, if you notice, too, and this is something, I am supporting No Shave November, and I'm getting a lot of crap about it from Rebecca about my Brillo pad here. But this is not my pink phone. This is Rebecca's pink phone. My phone, my phone is black. Oh, it's right there. My phone is black. Now that that's okay. cleared up. You okay. Can go ahead. So anyway, now the drug is called Burundanga. Burundanga. Which I'm B-U- sure there's a slang name for it, but we uh, it doesn't say anything. I see. Yep. B u r u n d a n g a. Okay. And it says criminals in the U.S. are using Burundanga soaked business cars to incapacitate their victims. All right. Here's a story. At a patrol pump, a man came over and offered his services as a painter to a lady filling petrol in her car and left his visiting card. She said nothing but accepted his card out of sheer kindness and got into the car. The man then got into a car driven by another person. As the lady left the service station, she saw the men following her out of the station at the same time. Almost immediately, she started to feel dizzy and could not catch her breath. She tried to open the window and realized that the odor was on her hand, the same hand with which she had received the card from the person at the service station. She then noticed that the men were immediately behind her, and she felt that she needed to do something at that moment. She drove into the first driveway and began to honk her horn repeatedly to ask for help. The men drove away, but the lady still felt pretty bad for several minutes after she could finally catch her breath. Apparently, there was a substance on the card that could have seriously injured her. This drug is called Burundanga, and I might be pronouncing it incorrect, but that's the way it's spelled. Not known to people so far, but sufficient information is available. And it is used by people who wish to incapacitate a victim in order to steal from or take advantage of them. This drug is four times more dangerous than the date rape drug and is transferable on a simple card or paper. 
So please take heed and make sure you don't accept cards when you are alone or from someone on the streets. This applies to those making house calls and slipping your card when they offer their services. I mean, how much more dangerous can you take in a drug and it making you completely black out be? I mean, that's what the date rape drug does. It makes you completely black out, doesn't it? Yeah. So what's more? How can you get more dangerous than that? Well, this is more dangerous because they're saying that the date rape drug, you have to, you know, put in somebody's drink. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So it's, oh, um, they mean dangerous by how they can uh, how they deliver can, it. To yeah, how they can oh, deliver it to somebody. Yeah, I mean, like sense. like you're saying, you know, date rape drug is usually, oh, you got to be out partying. You know, somebody's got to be sneaky enough to get it in your drink. Pay attention to your drink and it won't happen to you. Yeah. Now, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, I'm, I work for blah, 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 executive. And then well, here's my business card. You know, that can happen anywhere. That can mm-hmm. happen at a ball game. That can happen in your own office. You know, you could be like just like where we're at right now. We're in the studio and we could have walked in the guy that we met outside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's say you were leaving by yourself and you got in the elevator and he was like, hey, how you doing? I'm an executive, blah, 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 blah. Here's my business card. You say, oh, thank you. Just being polite to accept the card. You know what I'm saying? And you grab the card. You know, it's nighttime. You know, how many women leave here at nighttime by themselves? Yeah. And you're walking down with this card in your hand and you get to your car. Next thing you know, yeah. you pass out. Yeah. So that's what makes it more Usually dangerous. I'm not very polite. I don't even give them eye contact. So. I mean, the, <laughs> it, you know, it's a shame. We are going to do a podcast on it called No Good Deed Unpunished. Uh, but that's true. It's like nowadays, man, you got to really be careful being polite Yeah. because so many people are out to get you. So I just advise, you know, if you're a woman and you're alone, you know, it goes back to awareness again. If you're a woman and you're alone, you know, and you're in a, in a weird area, you know, you're just going to have to be rude, man. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? Of, a lot of times, though, it's the way you carry yourself. I think still from all the, you know, stories that we've ever done, they still – most of the time are targeting a certain type of person. And it's still somebody who doesn't usually carry themselves with confidence. Yeah, that now that's true when you're going for an attack. Like, all right, if a criminal is going for an attack and he's, he wants to, remember I say they try to predict your response. Mm-hmm. So if they're saying, okay, I'm going to attack this girl running and they're going to look for somebody who's probably not going to fight back. But this card, you're not going to fight back. You know, once that chemical kicks in, yeah. you're out. Yeah, so but anybody, they're still taking any, the chance that you might totally tell them to leave them alone and everything. So, Well, no, but that still has nothing to do with handing your card. If they want to attack you, there's not going to be a fight. Once you accept this card, you're going to pass out. Yeah, that's true. You see, so that can be anybody. They can go for anybody. Now it's not a thing of, hey, I, I need to look for a weak-looking woman who looks like she has no confidence, who looks like she's not going to fight back. Mm-hmm. They don't have to think like that anymore because now they can just hand that card to anybody. You accept it. You could be this executive business lady. You could be a police officer with a gun on your hip. Yeah. You know, and you, okay, thank you. You take that card and it passes you out. There is no fight. Yeah. And that's why it's really dangerous. So all I can say to the ladies out there, you know, you have to, you know, really, really – if you're in these situations where, you know, you're in an area by yourself, you know, where it seems like something like that could happen, you know, just don't accept flyers, don't accept any kind of paper products. You know, somebody offers you, say, hey, thanks, I appreciate it, but no thank you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the, the best thing you could do, the best but way to do it. The other one I saw, too, which this one's just more on the carjacking level, but they're putting a fake, it looked like it was a fake $100 bill. They're putting it in the windshield wiper and... They're putting it deep enough where you have to stop, get out of your car, go grab the hundred dollar bill, and then what they're doing is jumping in the car and taking off with the car. Oh, and, and to steal cars? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> There's so many tricks out there. You just have to, you know, anything that seems odd, you know what I'm saying? Don't yeah. go with it. Yeah. And you know, I know just like I said, it's one of the things is I always tell everybody, you know, you have to be ready for an attack. That's the number one defense for anything. Yeah. You know, all these people work. I know um it was a studio we went to. I remember it was you, me, and Caitlin. And it was one of the best studios on the planet. I mean, it was nice. And remember, we walked through that parking garage, and it was pitch black. Mm-hmm. Like, there was no light in it. I said, yeah. are we getting ready to get attacked? Yeah. You know, is this punked? You know, they did yeah. the punked video. Then they get ready to jump out and attack us. And I'm getting ready to put some people in the hospital because I don't know it's a joke. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But I said, there is no way in the world I would walk through here by myself yeah. without a loaded gun cocked and chambered in my hand. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. But people walk through those types of places all day, every day, like, <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, like it's no big deal, like nothing's going to happen. And I'm telling you, that's a spot that's built perfectly to attack somebody. And it's a spot where you got thousands of people walking in and out of that building every day. Yeah. So you just have to be just super aware and paying attention of what's going on around you. And like I say, you know, I advise everybody need to be carrying some kind of a weapon. You know, weapons equalize weakness, yeah. you know, and you can surprise somebody with a weapon. You had a business card idea a long time ago about... Just oh, saying, you just got attacked. You just got attacked. Yep, and you we start putting those on cars just to show people how easily sometimes 
you know, bam, that would have been it. You know, I, I well, like that idea. Yeah. Well, when we get the proper funding, <laughs> what we'll do, we'll just go on a trip. Remember I said, we're going to find people who are in yeah. uh, areas or in situations where, you know, like, you know, these women who like to jog in the woods, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Body said half naked. With headphones and just, on. Yeah. And just run up next to them, hand that business card, and then run off. Yeah. You know, you'd be like, oh, look at it and say, you just got attacked. Yep. You know, just show them that, boom, that's how easy, mm-hmm. you know, you could have gotten attacked. Yep. So just like that. So, all right, moving along into Beyond CCW. And sorry, guys, not going to stream this whole part. You want to hear the rest of this. You're going to have to go to Life Fight. You can find it on Stitcher. You can find it on, I think Jay just did the commercial for me. You can find it on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker. We're all over the place. Mm-hmm. But that's where you're going to have to go to hear the rest of the podcast on Beyond CCW. So He's talking to our live streamers, by the way. Yeah, to the live streamers. Yeah, not to the podcast listeners. You're about to hear it because you're already there. So <laughs> see you guys next time. Not the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> listeners, stay with us. We're talking to the live streamers. And for those of you who want to see us, well, you can only see me this time because of the, st- the type of studio I'm in. We're going to get pictures of me. But um, <laughs> no, I agree with you big time. But you, you look way better than I do. beard and mustache. They, they leave my beard alone. <laughs> okay, but you can uh, on Periscope. Now, sometimes I stream on Meerkat. Sometimes I stream on Periscope. And what I'm doing is I've got the two battling each other to see, you know, which one is best. Because, you know, it's weird. You know, I keep hearing from everybody, oh, Periscope's the way to go. Periscope's the way to go. And when I, I put Periscope and Meerkat up against each other from two different, you know, items. And Meerkat, you know, I get more, way more viewers. You know, one time Meerkat had 200 viewers compared to Periscope having like seven. So I'm saying, so okay, which one's better? sounds like you need to do that one. Yeah, but, 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 you know, like you'll see with this um, Periscope, like the uh, recording we just did. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to be able to put it up and share it on my Facebook page. People can go look at it Mm -hmm. later. I've been trying to do that with Meerkat. And every time I put it up, you go and hit play. It doesn't come up. Well, then every time you do live stream, wait, which one's the one that doesn't save it? Meerkat. Then we need a live stream from the phone and film it and put it on YouTube so they can still go see it. Yeah, that's an idea. If you're a Meerkat I mean, if that's the one that we're getting the most viewers from. It looks that way. Yeah, we're getting more (laughs) viewers from Meerkat, you know, than from Periscope. So we'll keep trying. Problem solved. Yeah. Well, we'll keep trying. What we need is we need two. you know, we need uh, to stream them both at the same time. Yeah. You know, from if we didn't have to use your phone to look up stuff. Yeah. But that's what we'll do next time. Bring your laptop so we can look up stuff. And then that's what we'll do. We'll stream from both and see who wins. OK. All right. Moving along into beyond CCW. Like I said, it's really important. You know, America's getting armed. I totally agree with it. You know, we know there's a lot of things happening. A lot of uh, crimes happening. And there are cases of people with CCWs who are carrying concealed uh, weapons that are stopping robberies and they're shooting people, you know. um, Really? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of cases. You know, uh, the case where, remember, I think I talked about it before on the podcast where there was some guys harassing. uh, It was like, I think, three racist white guys were given a racial harassment to an Indian to two Native American guys. And they assaulted them and punched one of the guys. And then attacked him, and he pulled his gun out and shot him, mm. you know, and it uh, stopped the attack. So, oh, there so, are, so CCW allows you to use it for? Yeah, for self-defense. For, well, yeah, but self-defense against someone else? Of course. I mean, who you think is going to be for self-defense against who? Yourself? Oh. <laughs> what kind of question is that? Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> you better ask Jay to edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what self-defense, if somebody attacks you, of course, you can shoot them. No, you're saying if he, you see someone else. No, they were attacking him. They were oh, attacking the person. Oh, no, I thought you said that he saw someone else getting attacked and he came up and shot them. No, yeah, you can do that also. Okay. Yeah, if, like, if I'm walking down the street and, and I see some guys attacking an innocent person, I got the right to shoot that person that's attacking them. But you don't even know him. what the situation yeah, is. Yeah, I got I to know what the situation yeah. is. That's why I said if I see them attacking. So I've already seen enough evidence where I know this guy is attacking. If he's got a knife and he's just over here just chopping this guy up or something like that and stabbing and, and cutting people. I see some mm-hmm. guy grabbing some woman and throwing her to the ground and stuff like that. Then you do have the right if they don't stop. Now, of course, you'd want to pull and say, hey, stop. Mm-hmm. You know what happened with this? The guy was getting punched. In the face. So he pulled his gun and shot the guy. So that's only if you have a CCW. If you don't have a CCW, you can't protect someone else like uh, that? You, uh, you still can use a – like CCW means carrying concealed. So uh, a CCW permit means you have permission to carry it hidden. Now, oh. a lot of states – now, you can carry a gun and it doesn't have to – as long as it's not covered and hidden, right. you can carry it. But, no, you can use a weapon at any time, even if, you know, you don't have – let's say I'm walking down the street and I'm not carrying a gun. And I don't have a CCW permit. And I see and some guys 
break out and, and do an armed robbery. And I'm in the store with them. All right. And they pull a gun out and point it at the, the banker. And then this guy over here is laying on the ground and or this security guard's laying on the ground. He's got a gun on his hip, but he's laying on the ground crying and he's scared to death. He's not doing anything. Yeah. And I grab his gun and bow, shoot the robber. I can do that. Hmm. You know, it still works that way also. I'm still defending lives. Right. So, yeah, you got to know that kind of stuff so you can know you can pop somebody. Okay. All right. Getting back to BICCW. There's a story of a girl. She was doing what's called a proud carry. Now, proud carry is kind of like what I was telling you, what I was just saying a minute ago, where in a lot of states you don't have to have a permit to um, carry it where it can be seen. So she was carrying it on her hip where you could see it. And a guy walked right up to her with his gun, <laughs> pointed his gun, said, give me your gun, and robbed her and took her gun from her. Okay, so this is just something that proves, like I say, just because you have a gun, and sometimes what happens is, you know, people feel that when they have a gun, you know, or any kind of self-defense too, the problem is solved. Mm -hmm. And I see that with a lot of people, even when it comes to pepper spray, you know, we'll do a pepper spray course and, you know, everybody buy the pepper spray. And then I'll see somebody, you know, two weeks later and I'll say, hey, where's your pepper spray at? And uh, they'll say, oh, I got it. You oh, know, it's in my glove box. Yeah. Or it's in my purse. I say, OK, we'll get to it. And I start walking to him. See if you can get to it before I get to you. And I start walking to him. They can't even find it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the same thing with uh People with uh, guns nowadays, yeah. you know, everybody thinks because they got the permit and they carry the gun that boom, problem solved. But the thing with her, you know, doing this, what you call a proud carry is for one, everybody sees her gun, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, so it's, it's exposed. And that was a, a situation. Another one where a guy that was even done on it, you know, I always tell people that criminals are smart. You know, they think and a lot of them are bold, you know, and a, a man, well, he noticed that a man was carrying a gun in the small of his back. And for those of you who don't know what the small of your back is, that's the, the area like um, in the center, lower back. Yeah. You know, and it's an area where people like to carry a gun because it feels more comfortable and out of the way than having it on the hip or having it in the front gangster style. You know, in the front, that's kind of gangster style. On the side hip, that's kind of police style. You know, people don't like it because it's in the way, your elbow bumps it. Yeah. So you put it in the small of your back, it's almost like, eh, it's out of the way. I don't have to deal with it unless I have to get to it. But a guy saw... Another guy had a gun there, you know, and I think he had a shirt covering the gun, but he could see it sticking out, you know, and he followed him into the bathroom when the guy went to the urinal, you know, to uh, in case I don't know what the urinal is. Some of you ladies, you know, as guys, we don't have uh, just uh, seats. It's the yeah. thing that stands up and we stand up at it. And well, of course, the guy went and when he went to go to the bathroom, he's, you know, you got your business in your hand. The guy walked up behind him, pushed him against the urinal mm. and took his gun. Yeah. You know, and. uh I know a lot of people even ask me when I'm at beyond CCW because they said, well, how would you defend that? You know, because I have a lot of, you know, techniques and tricks you use to stop somebody if they're trying to grab your gun. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's a hard one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hard yeah, that's real. Because, I mean, for one, I'm sure that, you know, the criminal was smart enough to wait till he was, you know, actually urinating. Yeah. And when you're urinating, you know, you're thinking to yourself, you know, I got something in my hand I can't let go yeah. of. Or you or can't go, turn around. Or turn around. Well, you can turn around and use that as pepper spray or something like that. I guess that could work. You know, that's probably what I would have tried to do or something like that. It'd be a. No, a, you would have never had your back to the door to yeah, begin that, with. That's what I'm getting ready to cover. That's what I'm getting ready to cover. That's one of the whole things about, you know, your awareness that has to be up. For one, let's go over to the girl who was robbed of her gun. You know, if you're carrying a gun, you know, personally, I don't believe in proud carry. You know, I think it's uh, what proud carry means. Oh, it's showing that means it's showing. Oh. That means that you carry it like a cop carry his gun. And there, is it usually for what intimidate? Like there's you. Yeah, they're doing lot, it to I intimidate think, him. I think more yeah, than anything. I think, well, the, which this, can cause them to to almost go out of a mode of thinking yes. they need to use it. Yes, yeah. I recall, and I will give you an idea. I recall one time my brother and I were in a you know a real small town in Missouri, and we were going into Walmart, and this is a small town in Missouri with no black people. You know what I'm saying? And we were there for some business purposes and we got out the car and everybody's staring at us and we start walking in the store. You know, we come out the store, you know, going through the store, everybody's staring at us, of course. You know, we come out of the store and we're getting in the car and this is one white guy, you know, real burly looking. He's just looking at us with this mean look. You know what I'm saying? And so he uh, he's just looking and, you know, I just kind of look at him and I nod at him and smile at him a little bit. And he just kind of nods his head at me, you know, and then he takes his jacket off and he's got a gun, mm -hmm. you know, sitting on his hip. To me, that pissed me off and it made me want to go kick his ass. You know, I'm sorry because don't show your gun off. Like that's like threatening me. Yeah, you know, like, like, that's how I felt. Right. You know, because first of all, how you know, we don't got guns, too. <laughs> you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I'm sitting there saying, 
okay, well, what's up with that? But don't flex your chest at me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just smiled at you and you want to try and look like you're tough or like, yeah, you guys try something, I'll shoot you. Right. So it did present a rude attitude. Right. And that's what it made me feel like. And I kind of agree with that. You know, when I see somebody and they got a gun sticking out, it's kind of a, a tough guy thing. Mm -hmm. You know, now, having said that and saying that that's the way that I would take it, you know, me per and most people would take it. That doesn't mean that's always the way people mean it. Yeah. Because one of the ideas of a proud carry is to show to uh is there how can I put it? Advertising or encouraging everybody's right to carry a gun. Right. That, you know, that's hey guys, we can go that you, way yeah, too. look, I'm carrying and you should carry too. You know, hey guys, this is the American way. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it kind of like that, you know, kind of like somebody who may be out in a karate uniform. You look at a guy in his karate uniform and say, well, he's trying to be a tough guy. Yeah. Run around his karate uniform. You know, but then if it's a guy who's just trying to promote martial arts, say, hey, guys, martial arts is great. and You mm -hmm. should learn it, too. So it depends on the mentality of, of that individual. Well, the, or of the individual that is so taking it in, not even the person that's doing it. Definitely. So could, right. you, get, you have too many different people out there that think too many different things. So you get that wrong person that thinks you're intimidating them, then that's not good. Right. That's why you got to, you know, the education comes in of knowing both sides. Mm -hmm. Because, like, the course of the situation where my brother brother and I were in where, you know, the, this guy was just sitting there mean mugging and, yeah. you know, they took his jacket off and his chest came out and he's looking at us like, you know, of course he meant it in a bad way. Right. You know what I'm saying? But somebody who's just walking in there having a, you know, like I said, this lady was just at a place, I think a bar or something, I don't know, having a good time and enjoying herself. You know, she may not have meant it that way yeah. because a lot of, you know, NRA supporters and people like that who want you as an American to know, man, you can carry a gun. Mm -hmm. You know, they put it on their side and carry. You know, a lot of guys do that crap where they, they'll walk down the street with an assault rifle, yeah. you know, wait for the cops to roll up on them and say, hey, I got a right to do this. And they film it, you know, and I understand, even though I'm glad the cops roll up on them and I think they should. Somebody walked through my neighborhood with an assault rifle. The cops better get them. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go get them before he unloads on a schoolyard or something. You know, you still have to be intelligent. People can't, I don't want, you know, this looking like, you know, Bosnia or something where yeah. everybody's walking around with AK 47s. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's not what America's supposed to be about. But still, at the same time, it still needs to be exposed that you have a right to fire off. So I think that's how some people mean a proud carry. But you, you know? always, you're always more towards the side that you shouldn't show your weapon, right? Just Definitely. in general. With I'm on a, well, yeah, I'm on a, you know, because of self defense. So, and self defense seclusion is number one. Yeah. You don't reveal your weapon. It's just like me. I don't walk into, you know, up into a building and say, hey, guys, I'm MMA fighter. I know Muay Thai. I know Kung Fu. I know Karate. I know this and that. If you try to do something, mean, this is what I'm going to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? They're like, okay, we know all the arts you know. We know that you're going to do so. We just go shoot you. <laughs> you know, yeah. we got to try to right. take your money. So it's kind of like saying, you know, if you're carrying a gun, they see it. You just gave away your chance for self-defense with it because now they know you have a gun. Well, they know where it's at and everything. Right. So, well, yeah. it's just like the guy in the uh, parking. If we'll go back to what happened with my brother and I. The guy in the park, let's say we were some bad black guys, some thugs, you know what I'm saying? We were coming to do bad things in their town. Yeah. And, you know, first of all, I definitely would have targeted him, mm -hmm. you know, because he pissed me off because he played the tough guy role. Now I know he has a gun. I know where it's at. So we would have just worked our way around it, right. you know, or we would have took our guns out first and shot him. So it still goes to that. If you're, you know, carrying a gun for self-defense purposes, I think, you know, seclusion and not allowing people to know, potential attackers to know that you have a gun right. is, you know, rule number one. Yep. So getting back to the man at the urinal. Especially um, since people really, I mean, like there's a lot of people anymore. It's the same with people that, you know, your criminals or whatever that are out there that they're not even intimidated by cops. So, you know, for you, sometimes for you, when you show your gun or whatever, they might think, oh, you know, oh, who do you think you are? So you're right. You still have to almost focus more on the criminal than on anything else than that. You're still focusing on the person that might attack you or, you know, uh, commit a crime, I think, more than just saying, hey, I think that you should know that I have the right to carry my gun and I think you should be able to too. So my, my right. oh my gosh, my whole point is that I think I would do it in the manner of not wanting to do something towards the criminal as opposed to the person that's seeing my gun. Does that make sense? Yes, I understand exactly <laughs> what you're saying. Well, you, you're saying it, it no, I understand. I wonder if the listeners understand what you say. <laughs> I do understand what you're saying. That you should be more concerned if you're caring about self-defense than about making a statement. Yeah. Yeah, that's more important because you are carrying a deadly weapon. Right. You know, so, you know, and then I'm going to get into that about, you know, if you're doing a proud carry, you know, your awareness has got to be up. Mm -hmm. It's got to be up big time. Yeah. You know, it's just like even uh, when I train police officers, you know, we used to, when I ran security for the monastery nightclub, all right, that's one of the hardcore nightclubs in East St. Louis in the United States. 
and we didn't let cops carry guns in there. And the cops come and say, you got to check your gun in at the door. And I would even, one of the things I taught in, uh, you know, my bodyguard in the um, VIP, VIP, thank you. VIP classes, venue integrity procedures for bouncers is cops don't need to carry guns unless it's concealed in the club. Because when it's hanging off like that, anybody can grab it, mm -hmm. you know, and the cops not going to open fire in the club. Right. First of all, you're supposed to pat down at the door. Wait, concealed means hidden? Hidden. Okay. Yeah. If a cop's carrying, it needs to be hidden and not hanging off his hip. Right. Because if a cop gets into it with anybody in the club, you're not going to be shooting anybody. Yeah. You're going to be restraining, handcuffing. So your gun, you're going to lay hands on this person. Your hands are being used and your gun is hanging off exposed for his boy to grab if you want yeah. to. You know, so it still goes with the, the situational awareness that if you're going to do a proud carry, then you should know who's around you. Mm -hmm. You should know who's behind you. You should know where that gun's at at all times. Yeah. Well, it still goes back to the everyday person just feeling safe. You still want people to not always feel, you know, like, oh, my God, where am I at? Why do they have guns? What's this? You know, you still want people right. to feel safe. And as a security person or bouncer or police officer, I would think I would want them to think that the situation's under control instead of out of control. Because yeah. that can cause a little more chaos sometimes than even showing them that you have it. Don't you think yeah. so? Well, definitely. That's, and that's one of the things, you you know, imagine walking into a room and, you know, you go into uh, the mall. Mm -hmm. And you see all these people with a gun hanging off their head. Yeah, you're not going to really feel safe. You know, I mean, these are not people who went to, you know, a cop has to go through training for years and they go to college. And, yeah. You know, most cops have to get a, have a bachelor's degree. They got an education. They mm -hmm. go through the academy. These are people who did a, some of them did a 30 minute online course. Online course, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, well, no, not online, but oh. having said that, I've had some friends tell me that they got buddies who, you know, can give CCW permits and they come over to their house and they give it, just hand it to them. Mm -hmm. They don't even train them or make them yeah. shoot a gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, these are guys. And so I've had people who even got their permit who say, I don't carry my gun because I don't feel comfortable. Yeah. I didn't get any kind they of training or anything. Training. I just got permission to carry. So you got these two types of people. One, Who's saying, okay, I didn't get enough training yeah. and, you know, I'm smart enough where I'm not going to carry it. And the second one who's saying, I didn't get enough training, but I don't give a F. Yeah. I'm carrying my gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh, my goodness. So yeah. this is what you got. Now, there are some CCW. I'm not going against CCW uh, trainers yeah, because I know there's some courses. Remember your dad, the course he mm -hmm. took, he said it was all day, eight hours. Yeah, it was like eight hour course. They put him through he situational stuff and told him, what would you do if this happened? And mm -hmm. you had to pull it wrong. That's yeah. not what you do. You know what I'm saying? But they getting them thinking, yeah. getting them thinking and giving them situations. And that's true. But, you know, as far as these guys who are just, you know, saying, man, hey, I'll come over and, you know, do it in your living room and just, you know, yeah. give me my hundred bucks. And here's your permit. You know, and then you got somebody carrying, you know, yeah. Imagine seeing all that. So, yeah. At least when it's concealed, it doesn't make everybody nervous. Right. And then that's where you really have to respect and appreciate the people who come to like uh, the course beyond CCW right. because they're still showing that they have an everyday concern about not just carrying this gun, you know. But about using it. About using it, protecting Correctly. themselves, you know. So, yeah. So getting back to the man at the urinal who's robbed of his gun, my safety features I always use whenever I go to the bathroom, I always go to the farthest you know, like I walk in the bathroom and I go to the toilet that's the farthest away. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I personally don't really like urinals. You know, I'll use them sometimes if it's empty. If I mean, I'm if you're going to use a urinal, you might as well just go outside. It's just <laughs> that's pretty much what it is. It's just it's like standing at a tree. You're right. You might as well just go out back and do it. Just go to nature. But what I do is if I'll go in the stall the farthest away and what I do is I never stand with my back to the door. I get to the side of the, of the toilet and stand that way. Yeah. So even if somebody kicks that door open, the door is not going to hit me. You know what I'm saying? And the main reason I go farthest away is because that gives me, you know, space. time. Space. Well, it gives me time and space. And that's what I teach at Beyond CCW is that you got to have time to draw. And so if I'm far, far away, I can hear footsteps. I can hear people coming in, mm -hmm. you know, and it's always, you know, if somebody's walking all the way down to the farthest urinal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting a little, okay, why is he coming way down here? Right. There's a whole bunch of toilets down there because what people would normally do if they got to use the bathroom is they're going to go to the closest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're going to come right in, boom, mm -hmm. hit the one close. So why is he coming way down here? So I'm automatically on guard when I notice that yeah, the door just opened and this dude's walking all the way down yeah. here. And then what it does when you're behind that closed door is hiding me also. You know, where he can't see if I'm ready. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know if I got a gun pointed at the door, a knife in my hand. He doesn't know if I'm sitting down, if I'm standing up. He don't know if I'm finished, if I just got started. So it still slows him down also. I mean, can't you uh, go to the one at the very end and like just slightly turn this way and still 
go to the bathroom or do you have to go straight into Well, I do that. No. Yeah, you can. And some when I use a <laughs> urinal, that's what I'll do. I'll always, if somebody walks in, I make immediate eye contact. Yeah. You know, and look at them as they walk in. Say, what's up? You know, and nod my head or something like that. And that's just like we teach with just awareness. You know, if you're walking down the street, you see some guys standing over here, look like they might do some, hey guys, how you doing over there? And just, you know, getting rid of their seclusion, letting them know that you know that they're there. Mm-hmm. So that may help. You know, and you can't go at too much at angle or the urinal. You might miss it. That's the only problem with you know, that. That's what I was talking about. I was joking. I was talking about turning an angle going at the one next to it, like urinating in the one next to you. I don't think you... <laughs> I don't think we're strong enough to, to hit the one next to it. You know? Maybe when we were 14 and 15, you know, but no, as we get older, it's not the, enough about that, though. We're talk, talking about safety. So so anyway, but that's what I would, you know, I would suggest, you know, because that is a hard one. I always tell everybody, I don't suggest carrying, you know, your CCW in the small of your back. It's not an accessible area to, to reach for, you know, um, and if you do carry it in the small of your back, it should never be in the center because if you fall backwards, that's going to drive that gun right into your spine. Yeah. Just like I teach police officers, don't carry your handcuffs in the center of your back. You fall on some stairs or something like that, you're going to drive that right into mm, your spinal cord. Point. Yeah. Yeah. So it's best to have it kind of on your the right hip. You know, if you're right handed, kind of the right rear hip. Yeah. If you want it behind you, you know. Uh, yeah, because a lot of the situations in the training course, they are falling backwards on their landing yes. on their back. So yeah. or even to their side just a little bit. But yeah. Hmm. Okay. So. Moving into the beyond CCW course, you know, um, the number one is awareness. If you've got good awareness, it can set things up where you don't have to defend yourself. You know, and that's how I try to live my life is that I'm aware of what's going on around me. So I don't have to defend myself. So first of all, you got to carry a gun if it's a situation. Whatever type of situation you're going, you're getting involved in, the gun has to fit. You know, if it's summertime, you probably don't need a giant Colt 45. That won't fit under anything because you probably got light clothing on. Right. You know what I'm saying? If it's wintertime, maybe you can carry your big gun. You know, um, it's got to be something that you that's easy accessible, something that you can get to and it's secure. Mm-hmm. You know, it's in a good tight holster that, you know, that you know that it, it fits solid in. Another form of awareness that I teach is it's really important that you have to be aware, you know, of where your gun is and be aware of people who are near your gun side. So if you're carrying a gun, you have to know where it's always at. And try to keep it away from people. It's just like uh, when I train security, I train bodyguards, I train police. I always tell, uh, you know, anytime I deal with police officer training, I say, anytime you arrive to the scene, there's a gun on the scene. And, you know, I say, well, what are you talking about? How do you know that? I say, because you're carrying it. You have it. And if they get that gun from you, you know, you got a real serious problem. So, you know, uh, civilians who are carrying have to think the same way that I when I walked into this room, there is a gun on the scene. Mm-hmm. If they get somebody to get this gun from me. They can do all kinds of crap with it. So everything you do, where you stand, where you sit, where you walk, when you stand in line, if there's a long line and you got a gun on your hip, you may not be a good idea for you to stand in line. Right. You may need to wait until that line dies down. And then when the line dies down, then go up, you know, and get what you need to get, because you may not need to have a bunch of people standing behind you and being in a congested area. Yeah. You know, you may need to pay attention to where you sit. You know, you walk in a restaurant and you got a gun on your hip. You know, you got this big, nice uh, Glock on your hip. And, uh, you know, when you sit down, it's going to poke a little bit, poke out. It's hot in the uh, restaurant. So you're going to take your jacket off. You know, it may not be a good idea for you to sit in the center of the restaurant at a table. Right. Maybe you need to get a booth, you know, and make sure that gun side is, you know, against the wall in that booth. So, you know, those are some of the things I teach about, you know, just being aware you've got this item this deadly item. So you need to pay attention of number one, where you put an item at, you know, number two, what kind of people are around it mm-hmm. and letting people be around the item. Good stuff. Another one is retention techniques. You know, that's one of the main most important things I teach is, you know, if somebody tries to go for your gun, tries to grab your gun, they're reaching at your hip, you know, and try to grab it from you, you know, techniques to knock that person away, techniques to get that person away from your gun. If they do get it, how to get it back from them. If you draw your weapon and they grab it while you're drawing it, techniques to boom, get their hands loose so you can use the gun if you need to use it. You know, these are real important things also. Yep. You know, is the retention techniques. Now, this is something that's really, really important too is going to facilities that don't allow firearms. You know, you've got government buildings, you know, schools, stadiums. Are you supposed to know this or is there usually a sign that says it? There's usually a sign. That says There's usually a sign, but if you're carrying... You should, like I said, you, number one, you should always know where you're going as awareness. Yeah. You shouldn't just be running around, you know, just carrying a gun. You know what I'm saying? Even though 
you got that right. That's, you know, I don't want to say to everybody that you can't go anywhere, you know, if you didn't plan to go there because you have a gun. Right. But this is what you can run into. You can run into a facility where it says you can't bring that gun in here. Like I said, you know, schools, you know, no gun zone, you know, government buildings, you know, they're not going to let you run up in there, you know, have everybody carrying guns. The only one carrying guns there is police officers. Yeah. You know, uh, stadiums, you know, you go on to baseball games, football games, hockey games. They're not going to have everybody in there drunk, pissed off, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> carrying guns. So th- those are places. Like bars, clubs, <laughs> restaurants, any of those you can't either. A lot of, I think it depends on the state. I think some states, you know, when there's alcohol around, you can't carry, but I think some you can, mm-hmm. you know, they still will let you carry, but you need to know if you're going to a facility that doesn't allow firearms, what are you going to do with your gun? You know, um, I know that for one, the stadiums, okay, most stadiums are in the hood. You know, I don't think there's a, a city that has a baseball or a football stadium in the nice area. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's usually downtown, in the city, in the ghetto, where the homeless live, the bums live, the poor live. Now, criminals think criminals are smart. So here you are. Now, you live out in a nice area and you got to drive. You want to see the baseball game. Let's talk St. Louis. You got to drive downtown St. Louis to go watch the Cardinals play. You drive down that stadium. You know they're not going to let you carry that gun in the stadium. So you got two options. Leave your gun at home, leave it in the car. Now, this can be this is dangerous leaving it in the car because all these criminals know that all these people are coming down here, everybody yep, fresh carrying guns, and they're leaving their guns in their cars. So now they're breaking into cars trying to steal your guns. So you say, well, I don't want my gun stolen because if somebody gets killed with my brand new, you know, Springfield Armory pistol, I'm going to feel bad about that. And you should. You know, if you got a gun, you should want to, you know, be, you should not want somebody to get it and use it in a crime. Right. So you say, well, I'm just going to leave it at home. Okay. So now, you left it at home. You parked in the parking garage that damn near five blocks away <laughs> from the stadium, you know, and you have to, to walk to the stadium through the hood yep. in the city. This is where you need your gun. Mm-hmm. You need your gun not for the drive. You know, I mean, you're driving on the highway all the way there, okay. but you need that gun for the walk, even if you're parked in the stadium. Because remember, we just had a vet just got shot that right here in St. Louis. He was mm-hmm. walking to his car from the game, from the game. You know, uh, now this is a vet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He should have been allowed to be as armed to, to a T. But some guys pulled up in the truck, robbed him and his, I think his wife. And then they ran off and they shot him in the back. And they shot him anyway. Hmm. So, but this is when he needed his gun. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this is the kind of stuff you got to think about. This is something really important. And so this is why I teach in Beyond CCW, number one. You know, um, if you are in a situation like that, of course you can't take your weapon in the stadium. If you're leaving your gun in your car, Get a stash spot yeah. they, where it can't be found, you know, or find a way to lock the gun to the frame of the vehicle. So if somebody breaks in, they can't just reach in and grab your gun. You know, uh, they do make gun safes for vehicles that'll be, you know, they can be built into the frame of the car where a person can't get into it so easily just yeah. by busting a window and reaching in and grabbing a gun. And that's what somebody's looking for, a smash and grab. They're not looking to try to break into a safe or anything like that. And yeah. a, a removable gun safe is not a good idea either. You know, a lot of people say, well. I've got the one you carry and I'm put my gun in there and lock it up, but they'll just grab the whole gun safe. Mm -hmm. So you still need something that a way that that gun is bolted to the car or the safe is bolted to the vehicle where when they get in there, you know, they're not going to sit there and try and pick a safe to probably get a little $50, 22 or whatever's in there. So they're going to move along to the next car, you know, and then definitely make sure you don't ever have guns, you know, that people can see. I understand having NRA stickers, you know, National Rifleman's Association. I support guns. I carry Smith & Wesson, all that kind of stuff, gun racks. But that's announcing that you got a gun yeah, in your car. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's a catch-22 because it's good for, you know, self-defense. It made, you know, just detour criminals. Because they say, oh, he's got a gun if they're getting ready to try and carjack you or rob you. But then when your, gu- your car, your truck's sitting there alone, yeah, it's just letting somebody too. know that you, got, you might have that in there. Which I understand, like, schools and places where kids are at, but... You know, going to a game or a stadium, you would think that would be where someone would want to be able to carry it, their gun, you know, the most. So telling somebody that they can't carry it because there's a lot of people doesn't make sense. Isn't that when you would think you'd want the most protection? Well, I mean, you got to think about it. I mean, I want, I want to carry my gun going to a game more than going to, you know, Walmart or going somewhere where there's not a lot of action. I want it to be where there's a lot of drunk people who might, you know, get stupid and try to, you know, take me and my significant other out or something that seems well yeah but you have to think of this as the the owner of the stadium you know and i've got thirty thousand, forty thousand people coming and you got the cubs and cardinal fans who hate each other you know or the blues and the blackhawks fans who hate each other and they already get into fist fights do i want them all carrying guns yeah 
You know, one shot fire, everybody drunk. Oh, I need it. Somebody shoot. I mean, that's a massacre. So yeah. the stadium's right. I have to agree with them. You know, now what I would agree with is this creating, uh, you know, lock boxes. You know, if they've got that where, OK, if you're carrying a CCW, you can lock it up when you get to the stadium. Yeah. You know, you but you can't bring it in. But then don't you think everyone's going to try to go break into the lock box? You got security for that. Oh, yes. It's in a very secure area, you know, just like a safety deposit box. Yeah. This is an area. It's barred off. I got armed security guard standing there. If you're carrying it. Yeah, that's right. I got all the answers. So hey, this is my idea, stadium well, owner. Actually, so, no, hold up. I want to get paid for this because they're going to say, wow, do you, hey, listen to Jermaine Andre podcast. I was actually that. just thinking about that. And then I thought that was stupid. <laughs> about, about I was like, well, why don't they put it in a locker or something? I was like, that yeah. wouldn't make any no, sense. It'd be just like a security deposit box area. Yeah. You got an armed guard there. It's a different line. You go in, you go in, you check your gun in there. Mm-hmm. You can't have it in the stadium. But you had it for the walk, you know, <laughs> and then when you leave, you've got it for the walk. Same thing we used to do at the yeah. nightclubs. You know, you check it in at the door. We'll lock it up for you. We had an armed man standing there. Somebody come thinking they're going to steal some guns. They're getting a, a face full of bullets, yeah. you know. So that would be an answer. Now, it's going to cost him to do that. So you charge the CCW right, carrier. Right, 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 right. I mean, is it not worth the extra 20, 20 30 bucks, bucks right. to carry your gun and protect yourself? Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that. And if it's not, then don't carry. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But I think that'd be a good answer. Yeah. Because, yeah, putting people out there where they're having to, to walk unsafe in an unsafe area or leave their gun in a car where it's going to get broken into. I think that's pretty uh, bad. So that was my, actually my idea since I was thinking it, you, you just say this. Oh, and I have to give you 30% now. <laughs> All right. But getting back to beyond CCW solution, you know, the uh, current solution now because of that is I, one of the main things I teach at beyond CCW is that you have to know how to fight Yep. You have to know how to use your hands. You have to know how to use your feet, your elbows, because one, you may not even have time to make a draw. And that's one of the things, you know, when you think of situational, a criminal, you know, he might be close to you before you get to make a draw. He might have a knife drawn and they, they've had, you know, done tests and they've shown that, you know, someone with a knife at 20 feet can get to you and cut you before you can make an accurate draw and shot. Mm. And they did this for sharpshooters. Yeah. You know, some of the best, quickest drawn, you know, shooters in, pow, in the world. So, you can't just because you got a gun think that, OK, the gun is the answer. You have to be able to get to that gun. And that's one of the things I teach you. And as far as going to places where you're not allowed to carry, that's why you have to know hand to hand. That's why, you know, pepper spray, uh, coup batons, mm-hmm. you know, uh, extended batons, things like that. You can still have optional defense tools besides just a gun. Right. Because, you know, that also goes to the point, like I tell people, you know, you never know. There's a big, broad gray area before you can shoot somebody. You know, if somebody walks up to me, like we were just talking in the beginning of the podcast about, you know, uh, the guys handing out these business cards to women that have that drug on it. So let's say we walk down the street, leaving the stadium. Some guy comes up walking up and he's like, hey, man, hey, you know, I got this flyer for this, you know, this event. You want to go to this event? Da, da, da. I'm like, no, we're fine. Stay away from us. OK. And he just keeps approaching. Yeah. You know, I probably can't pull my gun and shoot this guy. All right. Because I don't know if he's trying to attack me. And if you don't know, you can't just start shooting people. But you know what I can do? I start give screaming. him a stiff arm. Start <laughs> screaming. <laughs> I give him a stiff arm to the chest. I can even, you know, if he's keep coming at me, I told him to stay back. I say, hey, stay away from me. And he keeps coming. I give him a front push kick to the chest. It knocks him back. It's not going to kill him. Mm-hmm. It's not going to even hurt him badly. But it's going to let him know I'm not playing. Now, and that's if he, only if you said stop and he's right, stepping If I said stop right? and he keeps approaching. Mm-hmm. But now am I going to pull my gun and shoot this guy? You know, maybe he didn't hear me. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe he just, you know. He just didn't get it, and I just shot and blasted him in the chest. So you still have to have other options besides yeah. shooting, shooting somebody. somebody. You know, so that's where I try to teach you and be honest, CCW, teach them how to use their hands, how to use their feet, besides just the fact of knowing how to, um, you know, draw their guns and use their guns. So what about when they say you can't bring a, a weapon, like, into a stadium or something? Can you still bring pepper spray? I think they'll stop that also. Really? You know, I'm not sure. So how they to- leave you completely... Helpless. It's like going on an airplane. They don't yeah. care about you defending yourself. They care about making sure somebody don't get hurt with yeah. about you being a crazy fool. You know, and I don't know, you know, Kubatons, things like that. I don't know. I'll, you know, I probably have to ask somebody, you know, some of my people. But, you know, there's, you know, we've got tons of things that uh, don't look like weapons. Yeah. You know, and that's what I teach to be on CCW people. And you have to understand there's a lot of your hands, you know, I mean, a hammer fist, yeah. a palm strike is such a great weapon. And, you know, your hands and your feet are immediately accessible. That's the thing where they defeat any kind of weapon is you don't have to grab it. You don't have to find it. Yeah. You know, it's already there and you can't drop it. You can use, you know, get boom, you can smack somebody. And once you know how to use these types of attacks and strikes, 
then it makes it where you don't have to feel like you have to get to your weapon. Yeah. You know, because a person can easily, you know, work around the time when you can use a gun. Yeah. Like I say, there are times you need to know how to defend yourself when you can't shoot somebody. And that could be, you know, the attacker's too close for you to make an effective draw. You know, if uh, we're in a crowded area or, you know, an elevator, you know, say an elevator, a stairwell, you know, you might not have time. I'm in an elevator and a guy steps on the elevator with me or, you know, using an elevator and you got your CCW, you got your gun. And then he turns to you and get ready to make an attack. You go for that gun. He's mm-hmm. going to go for it. Yep. You're not going to have time. So you have to have hand to hand. You know, another time is like I said before, you're not 100 percent sure that an attack is about to occur. OK, let's say I'm in the elevator and this guy just standing looking at me crazy. You know, and he starts walking slowly towards me. I say, hey, get back. You know, and he's just walking slowly towards me. Now, he hasn't done anything yet. Right. You know, so I can't put my gun up and fill his chest up with bullets. They're going to say, what do he do? Uh, he, I think he's going to attack me. You know, he keeps walking, but I palm strike him in his chest. I said, back off and then draw, you know, not to let him know I was serious, but I had to have something to get him away from me yeah. before I make the draw. But let's say he's just walking slowly, looking crazy. I mean, I go reach for my gun. I mean, he's two feet away. Mm-hmm. He rushes me. Now we're both fighting for my gun. You know, whereas if I pop strike him in the chest and knock him against the wall and then draw my gun. Now, if he said, hey, what'd you do that for, man? Yeah. I just want to give a business card to you to talk to you about. I'm going to say, hey, I told you to stay back. And he goes and reports it to the police. All I did was pop strike him in the chest. Yeah. You know, that's probably going to get eh, swept under the rug once I explain the situation. But if I pull my gun, I blah, 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 unload on this guy. Come on. Yeah. They go, they, come on, guys. We, we got cameras in there. Mm-hmm. And you just shot a guy who was walking up to you. Uh, I don't know how they going to look in front of a jury of 12. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. You have to have those times, you know, another time that you may need to defend yourself, but you can't shoot is if your gun jams or misfires. Yeah. You know, it's a machine. Mm-hmm. Guns jam, they misfire. OK, you could run out of bullets. Let's Wait, say what's there's the difference between jam and misfire. <laughs> well, like a jam, a misfire could be like uh, the bullet didn't work. Oh. Like you hit the bullet and the bullet oh, a didn't jam go would off. Be like a jam could be like, a te- but, I mean, yeah, it could, um, you know, as you try to pull it, it just didn't, oh, the yeah, mechanics yeah. got caught up or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then it happens with guns a lot of times. Uh, you can also run out of bullets. Let's say there's more than one guy. Yeah. You know, you run out of bullets. Now you got to go to hand to hand before you can reload. You know, you can also, if your gun gets dropped or gets taken from you, you got to have hand to hand. And that's one thing I teach them. If their gun gets grabbed, how to fight and yeah. get your gun back. You know, but you can always drop your gun, slip, fall down the stairs or something doing the attack and your gun gets dropped mm-hmm. and it falls all the way down the stairs in the stairwell and he's standing over you. You got to fight yeah. before you can get to that gun. You know, another thing is like we said before, you don't have your gun. You know, mm-hmm. you might just be somebody. Or you can't get to it. Did you already say that one? Well, yeah, I said that one. Well, oh. no, I didn't say if you can't get to it. Well, attack too close for you to make an effective draw. Oh, okay. You know, but yeah, if you don't have your gun or let's say and you can't get to your gun, the same thing. You may be, like you said, taking the trash out. Yeah. You know, and you, you got one of those, you live in an apartment where, you know, the trash bin is a, it's a walk away. I mean, most people don't carry a gun to take trash out. Yeah. And you grab the trash, you walk out there and then the attack happens. You don't have your gun. You got to have some hand to hand combat defense. Yep. You know, so those are some of the things that I uh, teach in beyond CCW. It's a really good course. You know, I teach obstacle drawing. You know, I teach them, you know, one of the things we did that was really fun that they enjoyed was um, dealing with carjackers mm-hmm. and, you know, taking guns for them. And I taught them, I said, what are you going to do? And I sat him in a chair and said, here you are sitting in, this, in your car. And he jumps in the passenger seat. That happens. And he's got a gun on you. Or you got to make your draw from inside the passenger seat yeah. while you're sitting there. You know, so I showed them the things they had to do and how to push the person's head away from you mm-hmm. and guide their body. So you can make a draw if you're right handed. How if you're left handed, it works better for you. You know, how if somebody sticks a gun into your head through the window, how to take that gun from yeah. them. You know, so all kinds of stuff like that. Walking out to your car and a guy approaches you with a knife in your hand, in his hand. You know, and I told him, you just don't want to go for the draw because he's going to get to you with that knife beforehand. So run a circle around your car, you yeah. know, like the little kid car, little game he's playing as kids. And eh, you can't catch me. And while he's chasing you, you draw your gun. Then once your gun is out, boom, you turn. So yeah. I teach you all this situational awareness stuff where it's giving this great comfort to everybody now when they're carrying their firearm, you yeah. know, because like I said, there's a lot of people I know and they actually say, well, Jermaine, I've got a CCW permit, but I don't carry. Because I just don't feel like I know anything. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like I know enough. I don't feel comfortable. And I remember one friend, he even told me he had a, a situation. He's a CCW uh, permit carry. He had a situation where he had his niece or something with him. And something almost happened. He was like, well, you know, what should I have done? And I said, didn't you have your gun? And he just kind of looked at me and smiled. He said, uh, 
I didn't really feel comfortable having my gun with me. Mm-hmm. And I said, wait, you didn't feel comfortable having your gun with you when you got your niece with you out in the streets playing? Yeah. You know, but that just shows that uh, everybody. Has he done beyond CCW? No, he hadn't done it yet. He just did <laughs> oh, okay. it. okay. He just did it. So I'm sure he'll have his gun with him now, <laughs> you know. But that just shows you how uncomfortable some people can be. Yeah. So this type of training, you know, if you are a CCW, you know, carrier. Yeah. And you're not really comfortable, you know, carrying or you just want to further your training and get superior with it, this course is really good for It is you. a really good course. You know, it's really, and it's fun. The you last know. crew you had was really good, too. You could tell when they really respect, like I said, they really respect the idea that they have to learn this stuff to be able to carry their gun because they right. got— they really got into the scenarios, the situations. You know, they were really real with everything that you were teaching them, which showed that they really respected it and that they were, you know, uh, in tune with your training. Definitely. Well, the, these are the type of people I want to see carrying guns around. Yeah. You know, people who want to be further educated. Yeah. You know, that's important. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just like anybody you carrying pepper spray, carrying any kind of weapon. Yeah. You should know everything about it. You should try to become a master of it. Mm-hmm. You know, especially if it's a deadly weapon. Yep. You know, that's just like, I mean, ain't no different than martial arts training. You know, if you want to go learn martial arts, learn how to crack somebody's head up, you should be training and learning how to keep yourself disciplined and learning self-control and things like mm-hmm. that. You know, one of the main things I teach at Beyond CCW, I know we're running out of time, is, you know, about the shock. The brain shock. Mm-hmm. And that's why I do teach them how to, you know, how to draw when they're in shock, how to, you know, make quick draws, you know, because that's one of the shock main things going to happen. tired, everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's right. Put them through fatigue training. Mm-hmm. While wear them out, get them dead tired, and then they got to draw. Yeah. You know, just so you can, that's what you're going to experience. Because yeah. when, when you get nervous and you get an attack happen, your adrenaline skyrockets and you're tired, like in the first 10 seconds, sometimes you can't even move your legs. Yeah. You know, so trying to recreate those emotions. So that if something does happen and that emotion comes, they're familiar with it. Yeah, because the last thing you want to do is be fighting or running and then you know, yep. run out yeah, of Yeah, you gas out and you're not used to that feeling. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can't even make a draw. You make a draw and, uh, you know, you can even, if he attacks you, you can't even fight for your weapon because mm-hmm. you're like, wow, I'm tired. I didn't know this was going to happen. But yep. now you know because you've experienced it. Okay, and I know that that covers enough on uh, Beyond CCW. You know, everybody, if you're carrying or wanting to carry, you know, just, you know, a note from me to get as much training as you can, you know, so you can be comfortable with it. So if you have to use it, you know, everything will turn out, you know, for the, the best way that it can for you and for the people in the area around you if it happens, you know, and, and you can use it to defend yourself. You know, you don't get hurt. You don't get your gun taken from you. You know when to shoot at the right time. You're not afraid to take that shot if you have to. You know, so just get as much training as you can if that's going to be your tool of defense. Yep. And just be aware of unusual things, unusual people coming at you, you know, things, you know, that are off, you know, flyers in the car, stuff like that. Just be aware of it. Awareness is always number one. You know, awareness, preparedness and defend. That's what we say, you know, in that order. Mm-hmm. All right, Jermaine Andre, Life Fight, signing off. And uh, thank you, listeners. And uh, just finding out, too, that our podcast is rating very high. Yes, it is. Yeah, we're way up there in the ratings with as far as, you know, uh, listeners. And we're keeping it going. And uh, especially I'm going to be, you know, we're going to be talking about the Muay Tiger book, which is going to be releasing oh, pretty yeah. soon here. <laughs> and that's going to be controversial. That's going to really boost some things. But until then, you know, be sure to, uh, if you, you know, give us some reviews. You got any questions, thoughts, any things you want to hear, you know, uh, go to my Facebook page. That's where I'm live at. You know, I'm not live on my Twitter page. Don't go there. <laughs> I still can't figure that thing out, you know. So Facebook. I think you've opened, what, three different accounts? And you yeah, I had to shut. I think I has my shit three of them down for me. So one is still open, but go to Facebook. That's where you can find us is on Facebook. And everybody, you know, remember just, uh, you know, be prepared, be aware. You know, and uh, be ready to defend yourself and stay safe out there. And Jermaine Andre, we're Rebecca Beck signing off from Life Fight. Bye. For all things Jermaine Andre, get books, get trained, learn the secrets behind his brawn, his brain, and his edge. Visit JermaineAndre.com. Life Fight with Jermaine Andre is another positive production of Rare Gem Productions. Thanks for listening.